hi okay hello hello welcome uh, obviously it's gonna take a little moment for you guys to come on I'm gonna tell you what happens why it takes uh, that moment other than the fact that you are watching for um, you know you're refreshing hey Joe I love it love it you guys are refreshing so that you know I'm popping on so there's that delay because um, I guess Facebook doesn't like you know always tell you right away I know some of you guys are following you've clicked that alert tab so that you you get a notification when I come on um, but I was thinking about this on the drive over about you know kind of like the delay between us people who come on live and you guys knowing that we came on live and there's obviously been some freaking stuff that happened on Facebook you've heard in the news there was a guy who went into a synagogue and he like shot the place up and he was he did it live on Facebook so I really do think there's an algorithm that happens somewhere where everybody who goes live goes through a system where it's somehow monitored to make sure that something horrible isn't happening before it gets streamed onto Facebook but tonight, oh my God, we are talking about some some pretty heavy stuff when it comes to men. But like, really, it's still really lighthearted. Um, it's super fun. But I'm gonna debunk a bunch of myths tonight, and I definitely want the men to chime in. And I want you to tell me the not so secret secrets that you want women to know about you. Now, when I say not so secret secrets, there are so many myths. I was talking to somebody about this today, about the misconceptions that we have just, you know, in general, in dating, in relating to each other. Uh, and, and, and I really wanted to do this show because I want women to understand, you know, it's like I have men who are like, can you make me some videos? Can you write a book for us? And I'm like, men, listen to me. I am working for you. When I speak to the women and I help them understand you, it means when they see you, they're going to recognize you. And, and through, you know, kind of understanding you through me, then I really am paving the way for you to get in a relationship with somebody who's going to appreciate you because they recognize you and the goodness and the awesomeness that comes with you. So, you know, for all the men who are like, why are you always talking to women? I'm because I'm I'm helping you. I'm helping you. I'm I'm helping women get to you. Um, so yes, I speak to women a lot. Listen, women are over 80% of my demographic. I look at my, my analytics all the time. Women are coming to my website over 80%, over 80% on Facebook, over 80% on Instagram. This is women love what I say because I am enlightening them. Men, I know you love what I say because I get you. You're going to see that again tonight for sure, for shizzle because again i'm just going to create some more aha moments the kind of aha moments that really get women appreciating you so let's talk about the first not so secret secret that men want women to know uh, again men i want your feedback i want your input on this if i'm hitting something on the nerve i want to hear you go amen you got it sister whatever you want to say uh, totally understandable um, you get me whatever so the first one is about makeup ladies makeup this is this is such a big one it is Oh, my little Lulu, she's so good. We have a doorbell that rings here whenever somebody comes in and out. I'm at the collective, again, as usual. And uh, and she's learned she's not allowed to bark when the doorbell goes off because that just means somebody's going in and out of the front door. And we have a men's yoga class going on tonight. Hi, Paul. Paul, we have a man. Paul, come over here, say hi. Come over here, Paul. You're, did you take yoga or were you giving the yoga class? Giving. Come over here. <laughs> Come over here. Okay, Paul. Hi. On guys or girls? On girls. Um, I guess it depends on, I think a little bit can be easily overdone, I guess. Right. So here is the first not so secret secret that men want you to know less is best what about no makeup that's good do you love no makeup 
Yeah, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not speaking for all guys or anything, but mm. for me, yeah, I, I, I like not makeup. I like to just seeing natural, mm -hmm. beautiful ladies or whatever. So one thing that I saw a 20 something year old TikToker say today was that first thing in the morning, messy hair, no makeup, super sexy. What do you think? <laughs> I'd have to take it on a person by person thing, I guess. I don't mm. know. I generalize it, but if she's in your bed, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, it's I'm probably sure. super yeah, sexy. Come, yeah, I would agree with that totally. Yeah, for sure. So if she's attractive enough, if she's attractive enough to be in your bed, and the next morning, messy hair, no makeup, is she still attractive? Definitely, I find that very attractive. Very attractive, ladies. Pay attention less is best. So here's a study that they did. They had men look at pictures of women wearing makeup. They had women wearing a little bit of makeup and then the same woman wearing a lot of makeup. Men preferred a little bit of makeup like, over totally a lot. I agree with that. Yeah. And let me, so man, generous long-term thinker, am I right? High five. Guys who are selfish short-term thinkers like a lot of makeup because a lot of makeup is actually a sign of insecurity. The more you're masking your, I'm not saying everybody, because some of you are very artistic and you love wearing a lot of makeup, and that is just how you express yourself and you just, you just love to be artistic with it. But if you're wearing a lot of makeup because you wanna mask yourself, you are becoming a guy magnet. Men. And I'm sure it's the same as ladies. If they would like to have someone in their life they want, genuine so i mean i think less makeup is more genuine they want to be the genuine person like you're saying you're not masking anything you're not masking anything um okay guys i just had carolyn say so you're not working on this end can you give me some feedback and let me know if the sound quality and the video quality is working um i would think that if it wasn't, there'd be more people chiming in. But I need some feedback on this just because I'm wondering. Um, so here's another not so secret secret that men definitely want you to know. They love to be touched. Am I right? Definitely. So the best communicator when it comes to men is not your words, but your touch. What do you think? Definitely, I agree. I think that not only the touch shows that a man that they're important and loved, but it also triggers them to be more touchy as well back or create a stronger bond between two people. Let me ask you this. I love talking to people. Let me ask you this. What is the best way for a woman to show you that she cares? Hugs. See, <laughs> touch is the absolute best communicator when it comes to a man. So you may go on a few dates with somebody and you can really, really like them and you absolutely want to see them again. You absolutely want to see where this is going. And you can say, you are, you're fantastic. You're handsome. You're funny. You smell good. You're kind, I love your interests. I definitely want to see more of you. But if you're not touching while you're saying these things, it doesn't register that you feel the depths of those emotions. Who is this? I missed it. So this is Paul. So Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm just here tonight uh, guiding yoga for mm -hmm mostly gentlemen, but anybody, I'm trying to, I'd like to consider myself a yoga farmer. Yoga farmer. Yeah, I plant a yoga seed and hope it grows. Nice. So I'm trying to get more men to come out to the yoga world to, because I find that it's life changing. I guarantee mm. it's the one thing that is gonna get you to inner peace and happiness that we're looking for. So I try to yeah. get that out, I guess. I talk a lot about meditation being, you know, the way to get to that inner peace. And yoga is definitely a moving meditation. And med doing the yoga is a nice way to precipitate meditation because it gets the body and the mind to a clear ease spot where it can more easily 
get into a deeper meditation. Mm. Love it. Okay, so less makeup is better. Touch is super, super important. Here is a third not-so-secret secret that men definitely want you to know. They are sensitive. Mm -hmm. Sure. Love it. Super, super sensitive. Now, those of you who've been following me for a while, you've heard what I'm about to say before, but there have been studies. So there's a place in the UK called Mind Lab, and what they did is they brought couples in, they separated the men from the women, put them in separate rooms, in front of computer monitors and show them images that were either funny, excited, blissful, or heartwarming while the people were attached to something that resembles a lie detector test. So it, it checked, you know, what your body was going through physically when you were looking at the images so that even if they lied, which men will also lie about their feelings. I, what you were saying earlier about um, men being sensitive, they are, but often that they'd rather hide it and not communicate it but they're still aware yeah it's and very... maybe they'll react to it but yeah not with communication sometimes i guess but they'll react different behavior to sensitivity uh yes so what i'm familiar with with what paul is talking about reacting differently like like women we tend to externalize our emotions so we we have we have our emotions you know we're having our emotions men have their emotions they go to the man cave they go, <laughs> they go so they go you know in the man cave it, it'll be like a separate part of the house it'll be the garage it'll be in their head they'll get super quiet but they go into their man cave and they wait and what they're waiting for is the moment to pass the problem to fix itself and then they'll come back out because they just don't like conflict we want to get it out we want to express it we want to get it over with whereas they want to skirt around it and hope while they were going around the issue the issue in the middle was fixing itself and really that's a very logical thing to do and i'll tell you why as you know a coach i i deal with both men and women but i find that getting women to meditate puts them in the kind of mindset the more calm mindset that men tend to inhabit how do we know that they have a more calm mindset well if you ask them what they're thinking they actually might say nothing and that nothing is the truth we need to work to get to a nothing place so while we blow up and we go through our emotions and we're having this stuff going on in our head they are like okay i don't understand this mindset so i'm going to go to a quiet place and hopefully she will work through the noise in her head and come back to a quiet place and then meet me there what do you think yeah i agree i don't know what ladies minds are but i can vouch for mine I, I do feel that some men also struggle with thought and need to go to a place where they have quiet, where they don't have any interference so they can bring themselves to a clearer mind. Yeah. I love that he said interference because it's like radio frequencies in our head and you need to dial it to the right place to get into the right frequency. Um, so going back to the sensitivity factor and the tests that they were doing in this place called Mind Lab, having the people sit in front of images, having them attached to monitors so that, uh, oh, Jen, Jen is sending me text messages right now and Jen happens to be sitting right across from us. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, Jen is actually the woman who owns and runs the collective. Have you seen the clip about men and the boxes in their heads compared to women? Yes. So, yeah. So, so uh, it's, it's we multitask on a level that men, like Paul said, cannot understand. And it's hard for us to understand which to get women to meditate because couples work better when women are calmer. And they were attached to lie detector tests when the men were looking at these images that were exciting, blissful, funny, or heartwarming because men will lie about their feelings. 
which is another test that they did. After they did this testing, they brought the men back and they said, okay, we have your results. Did you actually lie on the emotions that you felt? And 67% said, yes, they did. But what they found was that funny, exciting, and blissful men equal our emotional response. Heartwarming, they double our emotional response. Are you surprised about that? Yeah, I guess so. I'm not quite understanding what you mean by it. Like, if you can explain a little. So funny, exciting, or blissful, you and I will have the same emotional reaction. We're going to feel okay, it in yeah. the same intensity. Mm -hmm. But heartwarming, you are twice the intensity that I feel. Really? It's a, that does surprise me. Yeah, it surprised me too. And I'm going to tell you guys, learning that study saved my marriage. Because before that point, I had it in my mind that men had a reduced emotional level than we did. Because back in caveman days, guess who went and killed Bambi? And so I told myself that in order for the hunters to go kill Bambi, they had to not feel so sensitive, so empathetic to the animal that they were, you know, banging on the head, right? So, and so, also, if men have a ranking system, swing sensitivity lowers you on the ranking system, I think, subconsciously. Mm. You, need to, you can't be high on the ranking system and be sensitive. Right. I don't know, not that I agree with it. Yeah. Do I, you have children? Yes. What happened the moment your child was born, your first one? I don't, it was a long time ago. I don't really recall too much. You don't was, remember the feelings? No, happiness, I guess, surprise. Yeah. Like fear maybe to do, I don't know. I've had men say that the moment they saw their, their first child being born, their lives felt more meaningful and it was just it was a huge shift for them and, I, and i've heard my husband say this and I've, I've heard i've heard numerous men say this that when their first child was born it was like all of a sudden their existence made sense and this is where that emotion heartwarming comes from this is where your sensitivity comes from this is where your depth of emotion comes from because when you think about back in caveman days and you think about the roles that men and women played when it came to looking after a child, who endangered themselves the most? It would have been the men because they were the ones who were going out further. They were the ones who were tackling with the bigger game. And if it came down to protection, who was going to protect us? And what gave them the purpose? What gave them the drive? What gave them the willingness to put their lives on the line? was the purpose, was the heartwarming, was the deep emotional bond that, that they felt when their first baby was born. So we are biological animals who were designed to create more biological animals. If mother nature didn't design us with innate features that were put in place to ensure the survival of the child we created, you and I wouldn't be here today. So the reason why their emotion is double ours when it comes to heartwarming is because that is the emotion you would feel when your first child is born. Oh my God, look at this. And it's such a profound, profound moment for men. What do you think another not so secret secret would be? What should women know about men? Like what do you wish women knew? that they just don't seem to. I don't know. I wish I knew. But you wish yeah. you knew? <laughs> I, I think the, yeah. the hard part is such a variance in people. I don't know if you can say that all men or all women. But what about for you? In what regard, sorry? What do you wish women knew? What do you, what do you wish was common knowledge in women? when it comes to someone like you? I, I guess was how compassionate and kind and supporting I am, I guess. I guess I get back mm. to the heartwarming thing yeah. you mentioned earlier. Yes. Men are very compassionate, kind, and supporting. 
men are right and you guys know i i divide you know listen it's it's all about mindset and and to simplify it you are either in a selfish short-term thinking frame of mind which there's nothing wrong with that we have our moments i certainly had mine and there are generous long-term thinking frames of mind and when you are in a generous long-term thinking mode kindness compassion you know it, it, this is what men are when they are in that state when they were looking for somebody to share their life with these are the feelings this this is this is the part of them that they want to share with you they don't want to take their kindness and their compassion and their generosity and hoard it they want to share it with someone that they choose and and they also for me look look for the same in their lady and getting back to touch is it something that shows that kindness and compassion mm -hmm. touch definitely communicates kindness and compassion if you're touching in a kind compassionate way mm -hmm. and if you are interested in a man and you were telling him what you think and feel and and your desire to see more of him and your appreciation of who he is whether this is a date or this is your husband touch him when you are communicating that because it means absolutely everything to them i love it thank you for letting me put you on the spot can i put you on the spot some more can i can i ask you one more question okay what do you think about my no kissing for three months rule um let me put it this way okay go ahead let's say you are on a second date with a woman that you like mm -hmm. and you're like I can see myself with her. She's funny. She's interesting. She's she's dynamic. She's engaging. She's ticking all these boxes for me. And then she says, "You know, Paul, I really like you, but it's too soon for me to kiss you. And I like to set a date because then I can just relax my mind and just get to know you. And I think three months is the perfect amount of time for us to just hang out and see where this goes. And if we want to kiss each other in three months' time, we'll have our first kiss." What do you think about that? I think I would respect whatever the lady would want and see how it goes and things like that. I also know there's different types of kissing. This is yeah. a peck on the cheek or whatever. That's allowed. Okay, that's different than I yeah. guess. Yeah, that's different than, yeah. it depends on how much passion and, and time you're putting into it. But yeah, I, I try to go into it without any expectations at all because I think they're just premeditated disappointments. So right. I hadn't really put much thought in it, but I mean, the, the most important thing is for me is just like being with the person and whatever activity is going on, doesn't it? So that's a man. And if you hear, no way, I can't wait three months for a first kiss. That's a guy. That's how you can tell the difference right away. It certainly is a good test. Yes, it is. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Jen, do you want to come say hi? I want to introduce you guys to someone. This is such a fun show today. So, you know, I've been I've been doing this from the collective recently. You need to see the woman who put all this together. So, Jen. Tell us what you were doing before this, what inspired you to do this, and what the hell you're doing here. Uh, hmm, good question. Mm -hmm. I was in the corporate world running corporate life that was very busy and um, nonsensical, i.e. I didn't use my brain a whole lot. I did a lot of really important things, but I wasn't using my heart and soul to make changes in this world. And so I decided uh, just almost were coming up on a year that I ditched that world and decided to do what I thought I was meant to do and that was to create this house here my collective the collective and bring together really incredible healers so that we could offer change to the world a safe space for people to come and to learn and to grow and we meet people where they are and we help them into where they would like to be so that's what I've done and I don't think I could ever and so excited about all the things that we're offering here. Tell them what we offer here. Mm. 
we offer a lot. We offer a lot of love and compassion. Yes. Um, we also offer lots of services. So we've got uh, registered massage therapy, lots of different types of energy work. And if you're not familiar with that, come in and chat with us because we can share so much about it and help you understand. We've got Reiki masters, shamanic healer, uh, nutrition, psychotherapy, some talk therapies and coaches. Chantal, and we also offer a couple of really unique things, human design and rapid transformation therapy, which are uh, pretty incredible opportunities for folks to learn a whole lot about themselves um, and shift the way that they're interacting with the world in order to follow their energy the best, guide mm -hmm. them in that right direction. I love it. Yeah. Thank you, love. Thank you. Yay. Bye, everyone. <laughs> um, okay. So, like, did that make you nervous? <laughs> so cute. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's pretty much what I got for you guys tonight. I was kind of thinking, and and if you goad me into it, I'm going to do this. But I was thinking that I would call my husband, and I'd put him on speakerphone, and I'd see I'd see what he has to say, um, and you guys can hear his voice, um, but. Uh, I don't know. Should I do it? Should I call my husband? Should I put him on speaker? Should I ask him what he wishes every woman knew about men? Bye, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. I think I should. Oh, Rebecca, follow the light. Guess what my best keep is? Matt, what is your best keep? That does not make sense, Matt. Um, or your best kept secret? What's your best kept secret, Matt? Matt, what do you think is the uh, the not so secret secret that every woman should know about men? What do you think that should be? Let me know in the comments. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this just for fun, just for just for shits and giggles, because I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood tonight. What's my husband gonna say? What's my husband going to say? Uh oh, oh, he might be busy. Um, so just so you know, so I was talking today about, um, you know, misperceptions, about myths, about things that need to be debunked in culture. I'm going off topic here, you guys, but, um, you know, one of the things that we are not valuing enough, oh crap, my husband's FaceTiming me. Hey. Baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Are you okay? Are you in the hyperbaric? Yeah. Oh shit, okay. Yes, I am. I've seen you call. That's so cute. So, my, <laughs> so <laughs> baby, I have a question for you. Um, what would you say is the not so secret secret that every woman should know about men? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, wait, don't you already know all those things? I do. I want to know what you're going to say, though. Huh. I don't know. I probably have to think about that. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, well that doesn't work. <laughs> Why? Am I alive or something? Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I don't have the video on. I know, it's so cute. Uh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I, I, my mind's not in the right place to really uh, think about something good at this moment. If I figure it out, I'll call you. Uh, okay, baby, I love you. And you know, I'm trying to breathe oxygen here. I know, I can tell you sound like Darth Vader. Okay, babe. I love you. I love you too. Bye. <laughs> I... Oh, that's too cute. Uh, so, my husband was in a hyperbaric chamber. Now, what this is, is it's like a mini submarine. And you fill it with air, so it actually pressurizes you. It's like going underwater, except it's air that's putting the weight on you. And you breathe in oxygen, and what it does is it puts oxygen into all of your fluids, 
so that your body heals. So guys, you know, like if you get a scratch, then it needs to breathe. If, if your scratch was underwater, um, if it was constantly wet, then it would not heal. So oxygen heals you. And so something that my husband and I both do, because we're crazy nuts like this, is we go into this tank, fill it up with air, put ourselves under pressure, breathe in oxygen while we're doing it, and then depressurize, and then all this oxygen actually goes into our bloodstream, which is super, super cool. Um, such a stinker, I know, I know, but he's such a good sport. Hey, my. He's got something else to talk about. Come on, Paul's got something else he wants to talk about. <laughs> Come over here, Paul. This can help. Yes. I just want to say yeah. that for the one thing that guys would like to, ladies to know is we are terrible at reading between the lines. That's one thing. If you say something but you mean another thing, we are lost. Yes. And I think that throws off communication and inhibits growth in a relationship. Yeah. So being nicely straightforward, I guess you can, is so much more helpful than us trying to figure out because then we're going to take an interpretation that we think yes. may not be correct. So yeah. anyway, that's, I like how you said some. nicely straightforward because, and I had this conversation today. Um, I said, I said, what's the best way to get a man to do what you want him to do? Don't tell my husband this. Don't tell my husband this. Best way to get a man to do what you want him to do is start the sentence like this. I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. And then you tell him what to do. <laughs> because he didn't get defensive. He does not, he's like, did you see? He was like, yeah, yeah, right? So he's waiting for the next thing for you to say. Oops, oh, here's my husband. Here, All stay right. here, Paul. Oh, sure. Don't go away. Right. So you can nod in agreement, okay? Right. Okay, my husband's back. My husband's back. Baby, what's... Baby, what's the not so secret secret? Okay, well, the first thing that probably came to my mind is just that uh, we need time to ourselves, and that doesn't mean we don't love you. Very true. That's a good one. I didn't have that one written down. Um, okay. I love you. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Anything you want to add to that? Okay, I'm your <laughs> I love you. You're fucking awesome. I love you. Bye. Bye. Um, right. So here's that thing about about what he just said. What do you think about that? I think it's good for anybody to take the time to not think with their emotions, but take the time to clear themselves so they can think with their heart and logically with reason instead of thinking with anger or thinking with rage or whatever, you know, get yourself to it yeah. and not rush into it. Don't feel that you need to rush into an answer just to have an answer. Yes. Take the time to clear yourself to come up with an answer that you want. Yeah. Instead of having to come up with an apology. Yes. <laughs> but apologies are still good. No, I, you, you can never say I'm sorry too much. I agree. But I mean, if yeah. you take the steps where you don't need to do that in the first place. Yes. So, you know, instead of saying, I'm sorry, I vomited on you. I'm sorry, I lost my cool on you. You can just, you know, really keep it much more simple. And the distance thing, you men are actually hardwired to like distance to it's, it's, if you've ever read the book, men are from Venus, women are from Venus, men are from Mars. They talk about how men are like elastic bands. Like you, they need to miss us. They need to have some space to come back because there's something about the coming back that is super bonding for them. And, and my theory is this has to do with mother nature coding us in certain ways. And so she coded men. This is why you guys are better at directions than we are better at going somewhere than finding your way back because they are meant to go hunt that bigger game and then bring it back to the mate and the child that they have. And, so you're still hardwired. We still have throwbacks to cavemen days that are still taking place inside of our brain. And so they are hardwired to need to go to have some distance. And then there's a refreshing that happens for you when you come back. There's a renewed appreciation. There's a deepened affection to come back to their woman. And she's there waiting with open arms. And it's important to them. It's important to a man that when they take that distance, even be side by side, and they're miles away.
but they need to go away and then they'll come back. And it is important to not take it personally and to not be upset because when they come back, your arms need to be open instead of crossed. I agree. And if, if a lady has a problem with a man, I think it's great to communicate mm -hmm. that. You know, saying I I see that you're going away. What's, yeah. what, what's the reason behind that? Is it something I'm doing, or do you need to get time to clear, right. or whatever? I mean, so both people get their, their point across and communicate. And then believe what they say. Let a man reassure you when he says, which which you would probably say, no, everything is fine. I just I just needed to just go maybe clear my mind. Mm -hmm. And it's not you. Mm -hmm. When they say that, it is important to believe the words that are coming out of their mouths. Anything else? No, I just wanted to yeah, share, love that. It. I just wanted to share <laughs> that. We are mm -hmm. not good at reading between the lines. And the simplest you could form yes. of communication with us is yeah. the best. That's all. I believe that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. So we have Mara here. I don't know if I can put Mara on the hot seat. Do you know what the topic is tonight, Mara? No, it's the topic. The not so secret secrets that men wish women knew. What do you think should be common knowledge for women to understand about men? <laughs> so, Mara. Uh, Mara works here at the collective. He is our registered massage therapist. He's also an energy worker. So while he's giving you a massage, he's also going to find the, the blocks that are inside your body and, and help you through them and work them out of you. Did yeah. I say that right? Yeah, I think so. That's pretty close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you say it? In Mara's words? What I do. Yes. I listen. Yes. <laughs> Listens to the body. Mm -hmm. And, and what's being said too. A lot yeah. of times, like there's, uh, it is difficult to learn how to read between the lines. But like any language, you can learn it. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, that's something that I find is uh, has been important in my career as well as my personal interactions with people. Right. Mm -hmm. So what should women know about men? Hi, Amanda. By the way. What should they know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like real stuff, or like, or can I say something silly? Yes, say something silly. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> Mara, this is my audience. You can say anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is my people. My people are used to me. I drop F-bombs. I say it all. I say vagina. I say it all. <gasps> I do. Oh, no, not all. Yes. You're done. But um, yeah. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a little bit of both then. So okay. if I had an opportunity to go heart to heart with women and be able to tell them what I think that I would love for them to know about me is that yes. it's likely they're never going to know everything about me. So don't assume that you know what I'm Don't assume it. So always ask mm -hmm. and then believe. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about what you do and Jen said, I need a session like that. Jen, <laughs> 151 Victoria Street North, right across from the VRL station. Do you remember the old magic bedroom? This is it right here. So uh, reminder, you guys, this is the Harmony Wellness Collective. We opened in June, June 21st. Mm -hmm. June 21st, solstice, longest day of the year. It was magical, by the way. Absolutely magical. It was a great opening. It was. Yes. It was fun. Yeah, really it really was. Time. I got here, like the moment I stepped through the door, I started talking. I didn't stop until 10 <laughs> o'clock at night. It was unbelievable. There were so many people here. It was, it was beautiful. We, there was a sound bath upstairs, which I couldn't take part in because people were like, tell me. I was like, I kept getting dragged into the office up there. So this is where I do the speed dating. And if, if any of you come to speed dating, it is the most magical speed dating ever. The ambiance is incredible. The room is beautiful. I have more matches here than I ever have in any other speed dating event. And I know. I know it's because of the energy that is created here. This is a beautiful place. If you need to heal your heart, your brain, your soul, your body, 
the practitioner that you need is here. It does not need to be me. There is a person for every need that you have. Amanda, Amanda's a super fan. I love you, Amanda. She's freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jen is going to uh, message me later, so I'm going to be hooking you guys up. Amazing, Valerie. Congrats on the collective. Valerie's with Santa Valerie Byer. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you have some advice for my ladies? Amanda wants to come to another speed dating event. She wants to meet Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul, are you single? So, so, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Paul's heart is with somebody, Amanda. I'm sorry, you're out of luck, girlfriend. <laughs> because when a man says so, so, that means yes. <laughs> it does. Yeah. <laughs> That's, this was funny. I mean, you heard my husband um, when I'm like, what's, what's the secret that he goes, don't you know? He says, I know. I do. Any other advice for my ladies? Don't overfeed men because they emit That's sounds. True. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I, feed, I feed my husband and I'm, I, I, I keep his waistline in check. <laughs> Definitely do not overfeed your man. Don't feed them after two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and they will emit sounds. But farts are funny. Just yeah, remember, fine. farts are funny. Yeah. We're gonna fart together one day. All right, let's time it. Let's yeah, time. we'll have like a couple of beans <laughs> in front of us, and we'll, we'll just go at it. We're gonna have to eat lots of cheese. I love cheese, though. It doesn't affect me that much. Ah, uh, we'll have to figure it out. Yeah. We will have <laughs> to figure it out. See the kind of conversations that I have, guys. Like what I tell you. Okay. All right. Okay. It is time. It is okay. time. Thanks Thank you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I love you. Thank you. Loved all your... Oh, God. Another comments? Paul, yes. I know. Amanda's disappointed. Sorry. Um, Paul, if you have another man who looks like you, uh, Amanda is hot and ready. Um, don't get him wet. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay, you guys, I love you. Love you. Tonight was super fun. Uh, I will see you next Tuesday. Who knows what I'm going to talk about. I'll come up with something, and you know you're going to love it. So thank you. I love you. I've said that before, but I will say it a million times. You know that until the day I die. And as usual, I will talk to you soon.